Siri sent me out their uh, 1.6 full frame anamorphics and I am obsessed. Siri's pretty much just knocked out of the park with these full frame lenses. They're super easy to work with for run and gun type stuff that I do. The minimal focus is some of the best minimal focus that you get in anamorphic. And as we all know with Siri's earlier anamorphic lenses, the flares were very strong on these. I'm happy to say that they're a lot more control and they look a lot more natural. So that's pretty rad. Even on the, the wider 35 millimeter lens too. One second, ladies and gentlemen, I'm giving away this beautiful Fujifilm X Pro One once I hit 60K subscribers. So please comment, like, and subscribe for your chance to win. Okay, I'm just gonna cover a little bit about these. I'm pretty much gonna sell all of my uh, Super 35 anamorphics and just stick to these full frame ones. They are RF mount. You see, this is the RF 24 to 70 2.8 next to uh, the Siri 100 millimeter. So this lens actually isn't that huge uh, for what it's doing. So all the example footage in this video was shot on the R5C with these two lenses. Yeah, I'm just gonna sit down and kind of go through the characteristics of the shots. All right, guys, let's just start with what everyone's waiting to see, and that is the anamorphic flares. I know a lot of people complain about the strong blue flares, but take you through other films that are using vintage anamorphic Morphix and they have these strong blue flares. Like all these people are complaining about things. They don't realize this is the look of anamorphic. You guys need to do research before you start complaining. That's all I'm gonna say. Uh, you can see with 35 millimeter, they still look a little bit bold. Here's the 100 millimeter. The other lenses always had like these stark, sharp anamorphic flares. Uh, on these lenses, they're a little bit more subtle and uh, a little bit more dulled down, still a bit saturated, but you could fix that in post. Now let's just go a little bit over the bokeh and some shot examples. You can see that these 1.6X stretch lenses are actually giving the anamorphic look now. Now this is the 35 millimeter. You can see how dang wide this thing is. I'm probably about 10 feet from him. With this clip right here, this is the 100 millimeter. I'm just showing off the close focus. This guy was panning back and forth. He was literally maybe like four or five feet away from me and I was able to hit um, the close focus most of the time. You can see how close this is. This is rare because most anamorphic lenses, uh, minimum focus is probably like twice as long as this. So I don't know what Siri's doing to uh, cheat that, but it helps a lot. Here's a 35 millimeter. So I'm pretty much hitting the minimum focus here on the 35 millimeter. Um, and you can see it gives you a lot of bokeh and it has that anamorphic look. A couple last shots right here. This is a 35 millimeter again. Uh, you can see how damn wide this lens is, it is pretty great. The one thing is when you're using such an ultra wide anamorphic lens, it's going to capture so much of your location. Uh, so you gotta make sure you're really framing things up. So you see, I'm really trying to cheat it by throwing some foreground elements in there. All right, so now that you guys have seen the shots, I just wanna go over the lenses a little bit. They're both T2.9. If you don't know what the difference between tween F stops are, when they do f-stops, they're kind of more just estimating what it's around when usually if you get a 2.8 lens, it's probably more like an f like 3 or 3.5 and they just kind of round it up to 2.8. With t-stops, you're getting accurate readouts on there. The focus throw on the 35 millimeter is perfect. I have zero complaints about it. But then when you come to the 100 millimeter, uh, for me, I don't mind it, but the assistant I had at that rodeo shoot uh, he didn't like how short the throw was on it. For me, I'm kind of used to working with that. I wouldn't mind if there was another like 80, 100 degrees on there, it would make it a lot easier. But I mean, for running gun stuff, when you're just doing one hand operation, like this thing's a breeze to use. Weight wise versus my RF 24 7 2.8, uh, the 35 millimeter actually feels a tiny bit lighter, but the 100 millimeter feels a little bit more heavier. Um, but overall, I'm not like too stressed about these being on their mount. As we know, there's other anamorphic full frame lenses out there that are humongous and insanely heavy. They're actually not built that well too. They get a lot of dust in them. And I haven't been able to test the weather resistance on here, but from the stuff we shot so far, a lot of dust and everything, and I'm seeing zero dust in here. So, so far it's a good sign, but um, I should probably learn how to start wrapping up my cameras a little bit better when I'm shooting environments like that. Cause I have other lenses that are just like destroyed with dirt in them. But yeah, just overall, I'm just very impressed with uh, these lenses, especially for the price point. I mean, how Siri originally came out with the 1.3X stretch lenses and how they had the close focus issue issues. These also have that issue, but I think Siri is going to be coming out with something to fix that. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And they still have that great sharpness that the other lenses have. They're not as um, clinically sharp, which I didn't really care for on the other lenses. They're a little too sharp for my taste. These ones have a good balance of, they're still pretty sharp, but not like overly cooked, you know? 
Uh, but yeah, guys, so that's the 35 and the 100 millimeter. I will put a link down in the description so you guys could check these things out. It's now August 31st. I think these are officially being launched in a week or two. So um, yeah, if you're watching that right now, uh, stay tuned.